Hi, it's Donna Joy Asher, founder of The Belief Builders, and today I want to talk to you about the difference between knowing and believing. You see, most of us assume that they are the same thing, but they are not. In fact, this might be the most important thing you ever learn about your brain and how to manage it. Before I dive into the content of the video, I just want to say if you like this video, make sure you go ahead and click the little like button. It really does help with that YouTube algorithm and it's going to tell me what you like so I know what to make more of. If you really like me, please make sure to subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. Right, let's dive back in. I know what you're most probably thinking. You're thinking, she's officially gone nuts. Knowing and believing are irretrievably linked in the human mind, and I hear you. To know something is to believe it, except when it's not. Now, if we were on a phone call, I'd ask you not to hang up to hear me out. I'd say, stop, wait, listen to what I have to say. But since we're not on the phone, I'm just going to ask you to keep watching this video. You see, I used to think that too, and then I became a hypnotherapist. And even then, I didn't realize what a shift I had had in my understanding of our amazing minds and how they work until I was describing the process of analytical hypnotherapy to a friend and this statement just slipped out. I was sure your adult mind might logically know things, but your child mind believes and often the knowing and the believing are not congruent. Yes, there may have been some bubbles, not the soapy kind, involved in this conversation, but it doesn't detract from the meaning because as it slipped out, I realized how deeply profound it was. You see, our minds are like a deep, deep ocean. There are a lot of things going underneath the surface. Sometimes when the waves are massive and the surface is all chopped up, it's obvious that something's going on underneath. But other times, and most times, Everything can seem quite calm and peaceful, even though in the depths, the monsters lurk. So what am I referring to when I use the words knowing and believing? Well, as adults, we sail on the top of that deep ocean. We are a product of it, but not conscious of everything going on within it. As adults, we know things, things we have been taught, things we have observed about the world, things we have read. We are continuously taking in information and processing it, and from that we take our knowing. So knowing to me feels like a surface level thing. It just doesn't have the same level of emotional attachment as believing does. Knowing is logical and analytical. Knowing something does not normally cause people to take dramatic action in their lives. Knowing does not cause people to take up arms and to rush into battle. Believing does. So believe is the part that involves emotion, the bit that sweeps people up and breeds passion into them. Well, knowing is more surface level and analytical, belief is our core. It is what we believe about the things that we know that creates our actions, our inactions or our reactions. So for instance, to know the enemy is marching on the capital is one thing, but it is the belief that they are going to rape and pillage and destroy everything you have worked for that will make you take action to avoid your approaching fate. If you know they're marching, but you believe that they will just peacefully take over and that everything will maintain the same, then you won't think it's worth doing anything about it. So can you see the difference between that and the knowing of something and the believing? of what that knowing is going to mean to you. So we think that that knowing we have as adults is what creates our underlying belief system, but that just isn't always true. I'm not saying it can't be. I'm saying it most often is not. You see, our belief systems were formed very, very early, hardwired into our brains from when we were still little children. Things that happened to us then are what shaped the way we see and what we believe about the world. Now, the truly sucky thing about that is that often those beliefs were formed as a protective mechanism, a way to survive a traumatic incident. What we learned when we were young and powerless often led to us believing things about the world and about ourselves that does not serve us now. And even more suckily, we still believe those things. As an adult, we might know we are smart and capable and successful, yet all of that is for nothing if the child that still exists deep inside of us believes that we are unworthy, 
unlovable and unimportant. Can you see the issue this, uh, this sets up in our lives? On one hand, we know we are capable, and yet, ah, for some reason, we cannot seem to find the motivation to do what we need to. We find ourselves self-sabotaging, giving up before we have a chance to succeed, um, continuously chopping and changing, and a victim to our shiny object syndrome. And we're putting up with shit in our lives that just doesn't make sense to put up with. And it's because our adult brain is being undermined by our inner child's beliefs. And until you are able to uncover those beliefs, understand them, and dissolve them, then you're going to keep going around and around in the same patterning. You might break free for a while, but sooner or later you will regress to where you are living a life that ultimately backs up that underlying belief system. We are not made of the surface level of our mind. We are made up of each and every decision about the world and ourselves that we ever made. And most of those decisions are swimming deep, deep under the surface. They are the monsters that lurk in the dark. Imagine a timeline stretching from where you were a newborn babe till now. And along that timeline stands you in many different ages. Every time a younger version of yourself decided something, they took a place on that timeline every time they believed something. And all of you are the collective that created your foundational belief system. Everything you see in the world backs up that belief system. It's like a warped lens that you look through whenever you observe something. Your backup thought processes. So you back it up. Every time you observe something, you see it in such a way that it reflects your belief system and it reflects your belief system as being true. So sometimes things happen that allow us to have such a profound shift that we're able to recreate that belief system. But more often than not, it is that we are able to adapt for a while, like a piece of elastic being pulled out of shape. So what do you do if you want to totally rewrite your belief system? Is it possible? Oh, well, yes, of course it is. There are many things that you can do that will get you started on that journey. And opening yourself up to the possibility is the very first step. However, from my personal experience, talk therapy, self-development books and manifestations can only get you so far. You need to be able to become aware of the limiting beliefs that you have and often they are trapped deep within your unconscious mind. And even then, it is not a one-off process because your belief system has been backed up and strengthened time and time again. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, working your way further and further down to the core. But the effort is well worth it because at the end, your foundational beliefs will align with and support your adult knowing. And that is when the true magic begins. That is when you are able to create the truly amazing life that you want because your belief system aligns with the knowing that you can do that. So not only do you know that you can have what you want, you believe it. Your inner child is no longer limiting you. They are no longer holding you back with their talk of being unworthy, of being unlovable, of not being good enough, of all that chatter that goes on in your head that is gone and you, all the friction is off, the handbrake is off and you are free to move forward in the world exactly the way you want to go. Now, if you would like to talk some more about this, feel free to jump on my calendar to see how I can help you discover and shift these beliefs that are no longer serving you. So that's DonnaJoyUsher.com forward slash success dash session. And what we're going to do in that success session is we're going to look at where you are now, where you want to be, and then we're going to look at what's stopping you from getting there. See how I can help you remove those obstacles, remove those limiting self-beliefs so that you can go on to create the amazing, extraordinary life that you want and live you out your purpose. So I look forward to meeting you then. So remember that's DonnaJoyUsher.com forward slash success dash session. Hope you have an amazing week and I will see you soon.